Hey, as you all know, Don started out this project by showing you and giving you uh, outlines and basic materials for doing a killdeer. Killdeer is, looks like so many shorebirds, except it's not around shores so much. It's generally around parking lots and a lot of other places and roads and near any place that it can build a nest that's got gravel around it and because it's just has a nest that's a dish in the gravel and lays eggs that look like other pieces of gravel. So it, it you know, it's very nondescript and can easily be overlooked. And it does a job of distracting anybody or anything that thinks it might be a threat by running a few feet away and then trying to attack attention by calling and dragging a wing and going along like it's an engine bird and running away from the nest to try to get attention away from it. Well, the uh, it's distinguished from other shorebirds in this primarily by the fact that the killdeer has two breast stripes while other shorebirds that are look similar have one. So if you want to distinguish it from another shorebird or something, look for how many stripes it has in this chest. So that is the distinguishing point of it. It, this particular uh, diagram of a killdeer has a kind of a uh, reddish, uh, orangish back to it. Most pictures you find on the internet will be ones in which have a very gray back in this. They come in all variations in between. So either way is correct. The birds vary. It doesn't no matter of how you painted it, it's the matter of the way the birds vary. We'll try to go along the lines of what was given out as the handout uh, a few months ago by Don. And what I have done is I've painted uh, base coat on this so I can just describe it because we don't have the time tonight to wait for things to dry get into the next color and everything else and do all, everything so I'll try to describe a base coat and then we'll get into some of the more detailed painting I'm not a great painter myself I generally uh, put my effort into carving to give the, all the details on a bird because I go into realistic looking birds in this. So this is a little bit out of what my you know, expertise is uh, of painting on a smooth bird. So we'll, but we'll, we'll go through you know, the, the marks. I just don't accomplish quite the degree of detail that I would if I had a fine, you know, detailed carved bird. Okay, what we have here is that the tail, on no matter which kind of bird you have for, choose for coloring, is generally a bright tail of, uh, I have it as raw sienna, is the color here. It's kind of an uh, orangish yellow color. Uh, and so the tail and up the back rump is that color, a bright color, because the bird, when he's trying to attract attention going away, it shows its rump and the flash bright color just to attract people away or other hazards away. The back and the coverlets of the wings are 
uh, I have it as burnt sienna. It can be darker colors. The thicker the pigment on this, the thicker the paint, the darker the color. Uh, so I used a base coat in which I used in this area uh, burnt sienna plus white. I used a, just white gesso for it because it is very opaque and it will give cover everything in a nice uniform base <coughs> coat. So when you start painting you want a nice uniform base of basically the lightest color that you're going to see in those feathers. So you start out with that in both th this area and the tail and the, this color is the same as on the head. The black bands are black. Uh, they can be, there's various varieties of blacks for colors. You choose whichever you like. Some of them are more reflective than others. Some are shinier. Some are very dull. So whatever suits you, you can use on that. Generally, I don't go for uh, the shininess or you know dull matte color until I go for maybe a finish protective lacquer on things or a varnish. So I worry about the shininess at the end of things, not at the beginning. So you find various varieties of paints are more uh, shiny or others are very absorbent. I've used Josonia paints in this. They are a very flat paint. They don't, they don't go into a lot of shininess. They are a flat paint. So choosing paints is a matter of your choice and what you like to work with in this. So I've started out with those base colors and that base working. And I've done a variety of uh, work on the other half of this just to show what some of the other steps will be in, in working this. The, uh, see, I think that the back feathers here are black with a, um, I've used a, um, a Nimbus gray as an edging on it. Just a thin gr uh, light gray as the edge on it to define the feathers edges. Uh, I, in painting the uh, sienna, raw sienna on the tail, I've left areas of the white, which is the gesso primer uh, along the outer edges of these tail feathers. The only the longest ones extend and have the color extending clear to the end of the feathers. At least that's what the reference I can find. Um, the eye ring is another color and that is a uh, it's kind of a, a dulled down cadmium orange. In other words, I've used cadmium, cadmium orange and then a little bit of um, burnt sienna with it to dull it down and to make it not as bright an orange as a, an orange paint, cadmium orange is. Uh, Okay, when I got into how do I do the uh, wings in this and all the feathers on it, I looked at the drawing here and it shows a lot of feather outlines in this. What I did for the feather outlines in that was I used uh, the burnt sienna because 
straight on it and that is darker than my base coat so I can then it, but it matches it's the same basic tint to it or color to it so it matches onto it it's just showing uh, the variation so I could basically draw on feathers onto the side of the bird and that's one of the next steps I'll try to do here is that I'll get my paints Okay, now what I have on the table here is to protect the table is called uh, freezer paper. It is a paper that's white and it's got a plastic coating on one side of it. So the water does not go through or paints don't go through and damage it. Uh, I say that this is very helpful as a painting surface for mixing paints and doing other things gives you a good palette to do it on you're done you can crumble it up and throw it away and it keeps your wife happy if that you haven't slapped paint over, over a table or something so uh, okay this is some burnt sienna Joe Sonia's colors are that you'll find in some other uh, paints that they may be darker, lighter. Believe me, every paint company, everybody, it looks different. I don't care what they call it, but you change one variety of paint to another, they will not be exactly the same. Various reasons, you probably know more than I, but the name of the color is close but it's not the same uh, okay. now to make paints go uh, flow easier I use an airbrush medium to add to the paint you can do it with strictly with water to a degree, but it ha water has its effect. If you got too much of it, it uh, may uh, disturb some paints more than others. Uh, so this is what I... <coughs> and so I mix the medium with the paint To get it, this will make it flow on out of the brush easier. Uh, control, give you better control. And so I have basically a very fluid paint. And then I can go down here and I'll start at the bottom That's what and we we'll Make some large feathers that are at the ends of scapulars. Feathers. 
I don't try to do everything. It's just give you some hints of outlines of things. Because this is Now, before this, uh, I was talking to a couple people up here, and they expressed the opinion that they might be interested in uh, how do you make legs and feet for a bird like this. <coughs> now, I can, that is a, uh, another subject matter that takes quite a while to, to demonstrate. But it is something, if there's enough people that are interested in this, I might be able to do sometime in the future. Uh, is, how about, can we have a show of hands of, are people interested in details of making legs and feet for birds? Okay, looks like there's enough interest. So uh, maybe sometime in the future, we'll, we'll set something up. Many of you have seen some of my birds with, uh, in which I've made the legs and feet from brass and uh, epoxy and soldering and raising and stuff. And So all that I'm doing at this point here is just kind of giving a, an outline of where feathers might be hinted at, of a shadow or uh, so that it doesn't look like it's just a nice flat surface or a rounded surface but has some texture due to various feathers might be on it uh, because when we put a uh, top coat on this or a thin layer this variation will show through to a degree and give it uh, a point where we can uh, then uh, do some additional painting so it just doesn't look like a smooth surface, but uh, feathers. Okay, uh, also I'll do just some dashes on the head too.
What size brush is that in? This one is to Kowalski Sable number one, round. So it just to give me a relatively fine point to work with. Sometimes a much bigger brush has a nice sharp fine point and you can do all this with a, a number six or a number four. <laughs> but you just use the tip <laughs> and you just carry the paint with the rest of it. <laughs> okay. That gives me some idea on that, and now uh, I will <coughs> do... Can you hold that up this way? Oh, okay. Very polite. He puts on light. I don't know if he gets it good. And uh, I'll pass this around. I was going to do uh, a little bit on... Well, I'll tell you, I'll pass it around and, and while I'm getting... Uh, uh, the tail paint set up. Okay, what I am doing now is there's getting set up for putting the edges uh, or the black area on the tail. There's uh, the tail feathers have a combination on each feather of the, the bright uh, or sienna and uh, also goes into uh, the like black area and then gray, fading out into the sienna uh, along the tail edge. So it gives you some variations there in which we're trying to do some painting. And uh, then I will be going into after that uh, how to kind of darken up the sides in a thin overcoat of how to make that burnt sienna go darker and still say keep with the uh, something very close to the same colors there So if you're looking at it, you see one side is where we are now painting and then the other side where we're heading for. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, now this on the tail, we are going to do, make sure that that's nice and I'm going to get a little more. Ok. 
Okay, we'll go just a little ways in from the edge. Okay, yeah, get it out of the way. As you see, things take time. That's why I, you know, the, on painting you just can't do everything in one demonstrative setting. Okay. Adds the tail there. I could get a. I having a very thin part here. I can just shade in some of this. around in a minute here. Okay, now when it comes to this part in here, trying to get it darker, one of the things you can do with uh, a brown, reddish brown, to make it darker, is to, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, is to put a little blue with it. So that is what we're going to do next, is take some ultramarine blue, Mix it with the burnt umber. And that will, I'm going to have to make a little more than that. 
Is this going to be a wash then? It's going to be, yes, somewhat of a wash to it, yes. Now, one of the things that I do a lot of is use very thin washes uh, on my paintings because then I can change the shading on things by going very thin to very, with multiple coats, I can come back and make it darker and darker and darker. But this gives you what one coat is. Let's see if I can do some erasing here. Where I got things a little sloppy. When things are still wet, you can come back and kind of wash off areas that you make mistakes and run over in here. but I'll let you pass it around here. Now, I put a little painting stick on this one in which I generally have it hold when I block the hole in it. I set the painting stick in. It is advisable for all of you to have something like that made for painting so you keep your hands off the dang bird. Otherwise, you smear it up, or when you find out you've left oily fingerprints on the bird, and your paint runs off that and avoids those spaces. So it, it's just advisable to, uh, you know, use the handle.
Okay, okay, the next thing I will do is try to touch up the tail. Or primary feathers, right? I'm sorry. So, like I said, I have some nimbus gray. It's just a light gray. Since this is <coughs> there are times when I wish I had a magnifier here. This is one of them. Painting is not very exciting. Yeah, it is, because when you get done, you're done with the bird. <laughs> classes and what and, uh, different people demonstrating people that have won world class competitions and the main thing I found out from most of them is that you can always correct mistakes things happen you don't like it if it's in painting you don't like it with acrylics you can always get a bucket of water and a scrub brush and clean it off and start over. <laughs> it's, it, it's just that. So yeah, you do your best, and you, but you can change things. Let's 
not the greatest paint job, I'll say that. <coughs> And I did a lousy job of carving this because I was just roughing it out in a hurry so I could have something to paint on. over this back here and put some dabs of a darker burnt umber in places. this does it just kind of breaks up the surface again and emphasizes some of those uh, feather lines that I had there so that it <coughs> looks like there's a little more feathers to find on here then. So around the head here, there should be a little bit more of a grayishness. <coughs> Let's see here. Then, okay.
Okay, that's better. Anyway, that's let's see, it's almost nine o'clock. When do you want to break this thing up? We can <laughs> call it quit at any time here. <laughs> Can't go to Pier Thirty, I know that. Okay, no. It's one that's supposed to be color balanced for daylight. Is that the LED or is that? Uh, it's a fluorescent type. Fluorescent. But it's uh, supposed to be color balanced. And it's nice and convenient to work directly under. And seems to be a good color. Um, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, wide spectrum light. So. Uh, it's not like your normal fluorescents or this, which have a uh, fairly narrow spectrum of light to them, and depends on which <coughs> spectrum they're on. It's you know, it it's, uh, has more of a the phosphors are more balanced on this than it is on some of the ones that are more efficient. How does the painting? How do how do your paintings vary from that light to? Oh, it can be all over the place. These type of lights here are, are lousy for painting. And so that's why I brought this here so I can see it. And it probably bring it out. It, it may look completely different than it looks under here. It, it does, but you put it underneath there, it looks a lot different. Yeah. And this is it, is that uh, uh, that's a problem when you have in contests and judging, because you never know what light's going to be shown under. And you have it beautifully painted one place, and it comes out, gee, what's kind of greenish, isn't it? Or something else, you know, that, where did that come from? <laughs> so. It's kind of like my first wife's hair. Oh. I was, never knew what color it was going to be. <coughs> Okay, well, yeah. I think said that's the Okay, so we have the same. Well, to make it worthwhile is remember that the actual bird would look different under these various lights, too. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> What you see in daylight is different than what you might see under right. fluorescence. <laughs> okay, we can we can call it quits at this point. And let it dry out a bit. If you want to take a look at you know what I've mixed up here in this, you may be interested. I can spend a lot more time on polishing. 